today we are going to see the circular motion so now what is circular motion motion of an object along circumference of a circle right so there are a few terms related to this this circular motion and let's see those terms so first one is angular displacement so what is angular displacement so suppose this is some object it moves along circumference of this circle so it starts from this point suppose and in some time t it goes to this point point b so its arc or its path will make an angle at the center of the circle so that angle is known as angular displacement right so now how do we measure the direction of this angular displacement for see this is displacement is a vector quantity similarly angular displacement is also a vector quantity so we find out the direction using the right hand thumb rule so what is right hand thumb rule take your right hand curl the fingers of your right hand in direction of motion of particle and stretch your thumb so your stretched thumb will show the direction of angular displacement okay so this is simple rule we hear a particle is moving in anti clockwise sense curl your fingers in anti clockwise sense and stretch your thumb so my tab is uh, kept here okay so the direction of angular displacement is upwards okay so for you it would be outside the plane of the board right or outside the plane of your device then next is angular velocity so angular velocity is just angular displacement divided by time okay angular angular velocity is just angular displacement divided by time so delta theta divided by delta d and its direction will also be equal to what that of the angular displacement okay the unit of angular displacement we know si unit of uh, angle is radian so unit of angular displacement is radian and unit of angular velocity would be radian per second okay then comes angular acceleration okay so angular acceleration is just change in angular velocity divided by time so suppose omega 1 is angular velocity at some time t1 omega 2 angular velocity at some time t2 so change in angular velocity is omega 2 minus omega 1 change in time is t2 minus t1 so average angular acceleration will be equal to what delta omega divided by delta t this is average angular acceleration and what will be its direction it will be its direction simple right we are finding direction of angular displacement using right hand thumb rule okay so this angular velocity has a direction given by right hand thumb rule right so you will find direction of omega 2 you will find direction of omega 1 okay and suppose the particle is moving in same sense okay in anti clockwise sense so direction of omega 1 and omega 2 will be equal right so now if omega 2 is greater than omega 1 this term will be positive if omega 1 is greater than omega 2 then term will be negative okay so depending upon if it is positive or negative angular acceleration will have direction same as that of omega or opposite to that of omega got it so particle speeds up we can say the angular acceleration will be positive it if it slows down then omega 1 will be greater than omega 2 angular acceleration would be negative okay then similarly we can find out the instantaneous angular velocity and instantaneous angular acceleration so just in instead of ratio we'll take derivatives 
okay instantaneous angular velocity is derivative of theta with respect to t okay uh, derivative of angular displacement with respect to t and instantaneous angular acceleration would be derivative of omega with respect to t right this is just um, so this is <clears throat> how we find out the instantaneous quantities okay so these are few basic terms then how do we find out speed of the particle in circular motion so this is very simple we know that speed is equal to what distance covered divided by time taken so in one periodic time okay so suppose particle is performing the uniform circular motion right so it will take same time to cover a revolution so that time is capital t so now speed is the distance covered divided by time taken distance covered would be equal to how much 2 pi r time taken is t so v is equal to 2 pi r upon t this is very simple and now if you want to find out uh, this thing in terms of frequency so what is frequency it is 1 upon time period frequency is 1 upon time period just put that so you get another formula for v another formula is v equals to 2 pi r multiplied by n okay this is one formula this is another formula for v right then there is relation between v and omega okay so relation is v equals to r times omega this is relation in magnitude v equals to r times omega okay so this is very simple right so see delta theta we know if you if you consider some angle it is equal to displacement divided by r okay so angle is i am sorry angle is equal to what how do we define angle length of r divided by radius so suppose you consider this very small angle okay for very small angle it will be equal to what the length of r divided by the radius then you take derivative on both sides so delta theta by delta t will be equal to 1 upon r multiplied by delta s by delta t so this will give you omega this thing will give you what delta s by delta t will give you velocity take r on the other side so i can say that r times omega is equal to v okay so this is how we get this relation is it clear yes no Younger. okay so then so average speed can be written as v equals to r times omega okay So, u equals to, yeah, I'm sorry. Okay. So, if you want average speed, you can find it out like this v equals to r times omega. And if you want average velocity, okay, average velocity. So, suppose your particle goes from A to B, how much would be average velocity? Suppose particle goes from a to b in time t, how much would be the average velocity? Final minus initial what? Particle goes from a to b. Yeah, so it's not final minus initial. You can say straight line distance from a to b, right? So if you want speed, okay. What is difference between speed and velocity in circular motion? So suppose particle goes from A to B. If you want speed, you will take length of arc, okay, length of the path divided by time. And if you want velocity, you will take this distance, okay, distance AB divided by time. That will be your average velocity, okay, right? So then, now we know V is equal to 2 pi R divided by T. And if you consider one revolution, okay, one revolution, how much would be the angle covered in one revolution? Yeah. 
Yeah, tell me in radians. Okay, right. Two pi radians. Okay. So omega is equal to what angle covered divided by time. So angle covered in one revolution would be two pi. Time taken would be t. So omega is equal to two pi divided by t. Right. So omega is equal to 2 pi divided by t and then so you can get this using this analogy or I can say v is equal to r times omega r r gets cancelled so omega is equal to 2 pi upon t right and then 1 upon t is equal to n so therefore omega is 2 pi n okay so there are these lot of terms that we need to remember Right, these are basic terms. So, do you have any confusion in these terms or any doubt? Sure. Okay, then comes the acceleration in circular motion. Okay, so let me ask you a question. So, suppose a particle or an object performs circular motion with constant speed, will there be any acceleration? Yes. What do you think, Ganga? Particle moves along a circle with constant speed. Will there be any acceleration? So, actually, there is acceleration because see, what is acceleration? It is change in velocity divided by time. Okay. And velocity is a vector quantity. Velocity is a vector quantity. So, there can be change in velocity if you change its magnitude, that is, if you change the speed or if you change the direction. Okay. So, in, in case of circular motion, what happens is magnitude of velocity remains constant at each and every point, but direction of velocity keeps on changing. Right. Velocity at this point is in this direction. Velocity at this point is in this direction. Velocity at this point would be in this direction. It is always along tangential to the path. Okay. Or you can say tangential to the circle. Velocity at this point would be in this direction, etc. etc. So there is even if magnitude is constant, okay. If we think of uniform circular motion, even if magnitude is constant, the direction of velocity keeps on changing at each and every point. And that's why there would be acceleration in circular motion. Right? So, this acceleration, which is there because of change in direction of velocity, it is known as the centripetal acceleration. Okay? This acceleration is known as centripetal acceleration. So now, we are not going to derive it. Okay? We will just state the final formula. So, how much is centripetal acceleration? So, centripetal acceleration is given by this formula. Its magnitude is V square divided by R. Okay. And it is called a centripetal or radial acceleration because its direction, the direction of this acceleration is along the radius and towards the center of the circle. Centripetal, petal means center seeking. Okay. It seeks, it is pointed towards the center of the circle. Okay, so this is the magnitude and if you want to write it with direction, so centripetal acceleration would be written as V square upon R, this is magnitude and it is towards the center. So I will take a radius vector, okay, it's directed along the radius. So I will take radius vector and I will put a cap on top of that vector. So this vector is used to show direction only, okay. So this is unit vector in direction of radius. But is the direction in direction of radius? No. Okay. Radius would be directed. So at this point, radius would be directed like this. What will be direction of centripetal acceleration? It's opposite to that. It's towards the center. Okay. It's along minus of r bar. Okay. That's why we put this negative sign. 
that's why we put this negative sign okay so centripetal acceleration is minus of v square upon r multiplied by r cap is this formula clear yes no so we have to remember this formula as well as there would be another formula like this okay so we can get this one using this one so just substitute v equals to r omega in this one so what do you get v equals to r times omega v square will be r square omega square and you have r in the denominator so this thing and this thing will get cancelled out so in magnitude it is r omega square right r omega square now you want to show it with direction so it will be equal to what so you have already r in numerator okay so you don't need extra r cap etc so this r you have it is r omega square and it's directed opposite to r bar so that's why minus of r bar multiplied by omega square this will be the formula in vector form okay and then there is this another formula it is vector product of omega with v so we have not studied the vector product as yet but we have to remember this formula also it will be vector product of omega with v omega will come first v will follow okay first term will be omega second term will be v right okay so just remember these formula sometimes there might be a question so suppose you are given four options the formula for centripetal acceleration centripetal acceleration in uniform circular motion is given by and there are some options and you have two options okay two options are definitely wrong one is suppose a and b are definitely wrong c is equal to omega bar cross v bar this is option c d is v bar cross omega bar okay so you should not be confused between two these two okay the angular quantity will come first and it will be followed by the radial quantity here in this formula right so you have to remember this one or otherwise you will have to apply right hand thumb rule and find it out okay so is it clear or is there any question in this one is ganga okay then this is about uniform circular motion right now what will be the acceleration in non uniform circular motion so what happens in case of non uniform circular motion so you have one acceleration which is there in all kinds of circular motion i mean uniform as well as non uniform which is that centripetal acceleration direction will keep on changing right so velocity it is always tangential so at this point it will be directed like this at this point it will be directed like this etc etc so there is acceleration due to change in direction of velocity in uniform circular motion also in non uniform circular motion also and in non uniform circular motion there is extra acceleration what is that extra acceleration here speed is also changing okay here speed is also changing so now think of this suppose this is the initial speed or initial velocity it's directed like this and instantaneously this velocity increases okay so think of this like this so you don't get any time to change the direction okay within very small time velocity increases okay actually the direction of velocity is also changing at every instant so what i'm saying is just like uh, you play video games so sometimes you give boost right if you have played nfs okay so velocity changes within an instant okay so direction hasn't changed much you can say but velocity changed 
a thing like this for simplicity direction hasn't changed at all the magnitude of velocity has changed okay so now there will be acceleration because of this change in velocity the change in magnitude of velocity this no speed is also changing so there will be one acceleration because of change in direction there will be another acceleration because of change in magnitude so what will be the direction of this acceleration if you are just considering change in magnitude it will be along the tangent because velocity is directed along the tangent right velocity is directed along the tangent so if you are neglecting change in direction and only focusing on change in magnitude so change in magnitude will happen only along the tangent right yes or no okay so this acceleration is known as tangential acceleration right this acceleration will because velocity is directed along tangent okay and you are neglecting the radial acceleration you are just considering the change in magnitude so at this point only how much is change in magnitude okay the direction is same so this acceleration which happens because change in magnitude it is directed along the tangent okay tangential acceleration is just change in magnitude of velocity divided by time okay and then you can substitute v equals to r times omega so i can say it is r times omega 2 is v2 r times omega 1 is v1 and therefore what do you get is r times omega 2 minus omega 1 divided by delta t right so that will be your tangential acceleration so what is omega 2 minus omega 1 divided by delta t it is alpha okay and that's why tangential acceleration is equal to r times alpha is it clear yes no okay so there are two kinds of accelerations in circular motion one is centripetal acceleration which happens because of change in direction of velocity one is tangential acceleration which happens because of change in magnitude of velocity okay and this is the tangential acceleration which we can write as r times alpha okay a is a fixed t so therefore what will be the total acceleration so it is addition of this vector addition of centripetal and tangential acceleration so a bar is total acceleration it will be equal to ac bar plus at bar and that is square root of ac square plus at square in magnitude okay so magnitude of this total acceleration square root of at square plus ac square right and if we want to find out angle between these two so angle can be found using the regular ways right so if this is angle between the total acceleration and centripetal acceleration then it will be equal to what tan of theta will be equal to the tangential acceleration divided by centripetal acceleration magnitude of tangential acceleration divided by magnitude of centripetal acceleration and therefore this theta will be equal to tan inverse of you can say at upon ac okay so is this thing clear or is there any question in this everything now help me solving in questions so help me solving these questions this is first question two particles a and b are moving in uniform circular motion in concentric circles of radii ra and rb with speed va and vb respectively their time period of rotation is the same the ratio of angular speed of a to that of b will be tell me what is given there are two particles they are moving in uniform circular motion 
in concentric circles okay of radius r a and r b with speed v a and v b the time period of rotation is same the ratio of angular speed of a to that of b will be right it's option c okay omega a would be 2 pi divided by time period of a omega b is 2 pi upon time period of b if you take ratio of these so it's given that time period is equal okay so ta equals to tb so if you divide this you will get 1 so omega a is to omega b is 1 is to 1 okay so it's option c right raghu Next question, an electron is moving in a circle of radius 2 meter with speed of 4 meters per second. Find the acceleration of electron. So tell me. Which acceleration will be this? Will this be? With A, right, right, right. It is centripetal acceleration v square upon r. So 4 square divided by 2, 16 by 2, 8 meters per second square. Good. Next question. In the given figure, a equals to 15 meters per second square represents the total acceleration of a particle moving in clockwise direction in a circle of radius r equals to 2.5 meter at a given instant of time the speed particle is so tell me what should we do this is given that its acceleration is 15 meters per second square this is total acceleration and we want to find out the speed of the particle What can we do? Okay. So see, this is simple actually. You have total acceleration. Okay, this is our object and total acceleration is directed like this right so what will be direction of centripetal acceleration is always towards the center okay it is always towards the center of the circle this is center suppose so there is some angle between this total acceleration and centripetal acceleration angle is theta so suppose this is at total acceleration and you want to find out the centripetal acceleration what will be centripetal acceleration in terms of at C times no no okay yeah yeah that is but this is not tangential I'm sorry this is okay I I was calling it total acceleration that's why I put suffix t this is total acceleration a only okay total acceleration now tell me right A C would be a cos theta Okay. And you want to find out speed. So do you know the formula? You know theta, you know A. Okay. Do you know the formula of speed in terms of centripetal acceleration? You know it, right? It's V square upon R. Please know. Okay. 
so know that r on other side you can find out v square okay v square will be equal to a times r cos of theta so a is given it's 15 r is 2.5 and angle is 30 so how much is cos of 30 root 3 by 2 okay so then this is 15 times 2.5 multiplied by a root 3 by 2 so 15 times uh, 2.5 be how much 37.5 Is it correct? Yeah, fifteen times two is thirty. Thirty, and you want half of fifteen, so that's seven point five. Thirty-seven point five multiplied by root three by two. This is one point seven three. So yeah, one more thing. We need to remember root two, root three. Okay, root root two is how much? One point four one four, and root three is one point seven three. One point seven three two. This much is sufficient. Okay, divided by two. So this will be. This is v square. Okay, one point seven three. Uh, if you divide this thing by two, it will be how much? Eight point something. Sorry, zero point eight something. So I will just take zero point eight, zero point eight five actually. So zero point eight five multiplied by this thing. If you take Point eight of this, it will be close to. If I divide this thing by five, mm, it will be yeah. It will be how much? Thirty-seven point five divided by five <coughs> will be seven point. Two point five divided by five, seven point five, okay. And seven point five times four will be twenty thirty actually. Okay, so this will be close to thirty. So v square is close to thirty. I can say. How much will be v then? Will be five point seven. Yeah. Right, so five square is twenty five. Okay, six square is thirty six. It's it's between ah oh, twenty five and thirty six. So it will be five point seven. Good. So the option C. Okay, so some calculations are needed in this one. Okay, I did them in mind only. I hope you can do it faster than me. Actually, you have to do them faster. Okay. Because I don't, I don't have to appear for any exam. Okay. All right. So there is nothing else in this question apart from the calculation, right? Question is simple. Okay. Next question: If length of second's hand of a clock is ten centimeter, the speed of its tip is nearly. So tell me. Length of second's hand is given. What will be speed of the tip? So, tip is performing circular motion, right? Okay. Let's so, suppose second's hand of a clock. This is the tip of the second's hand. It is performing circular motion in clockwise sense. So, what will be its speed? This is the question. So we have got some formula v equals to something. Right? That will be equal to what is r? Its length of the second's hand. Okay. And what is omega? It's two pi divided by t. What will be time period of second hand? Okay, how much time does it cover? One revolution. Second hand of clock. Two 
Fifty seconds, right? In one minute, okay. Suppose it starts from twelve. In one minute, it will come to twelve. That is sixty seconds. Okay. So you have time period. You have the length also. Okay, that is ten centimeters. Ten times ten raised to minus two in meters. Yeah. No, no. Options are in centimeters per second. Okay. So let's keep it as it is. So it is ten multiplied by two pi divided by sixty. So it will be two pi upon six, or you can say pi by three. Okay. So pi is nearly pi is three point one four pi by three. Centimeters per second. This is nearly one. You can say. Okay. So it is option E. Right. It is simple. Okay. So this is a rare exam where you have high options. Okay, Kerala C. All right. So, will this be difficult or will this be easier? Compared to NEET. So, have more options. Will it be difficult? Will it be easy? level of the questions is same as that of the neat but there are more options this will be difficult right if you don't know about the options okay if you want to take blind shot this will be difficult right because probability that your option will be correct in neat is 0.25 because you have four options here it's 0.2 only because you have five anyways but we have to attend only the questions that we know next question a particle is moving uniformly in a circular path of radius r when it moves through an angular displacement theta then the magnitude of corresponding linear displacement will be so you have particle which is performing circular motion and it moves through angular displacement theta So let's suppose it starts from this point, moves till here. Okay, so this is point A, this is point B, and this angle is theta. So how much will be its displacement? This is the question. So it is length of this side, AB. Right, and how do we find it out? All options are in terms of theta by two. That means you have to bisect this angle theta by two. Sorry, you have to bisect the angle theta. So you will get it in terms of theta by two. So this much will be theta by two. This is also theta by two. Okay. It is. Oh no. Okay, so this angle is theta by two, and this one is also theta by two. So can you guess the answer now? Let's suppose this point is C. Yes, no. Okay. Suppose. the total displacement is ab it is this much distance plus this much distance so can you find the relation between this distance and this angle using this triangle you can find it right this is r okay so how much will be this side bc it will be equal to this side bc 
equals to I can say if I take sin theta here sin of theta by 2 it will be BC divided by R and therefore BC will be equal to R multiplied by sin of theta by 2 okay right so that is BC and AC will also be equal okay so it is also R multiplied by sin of theta by 2 so how much is total distance it's 2R multiplied by sin of theta by 2 this is the answer clear yes <coughs> clear yes no okay so this is also simple question all right please try to solve the questions a ball is moving in a circular path of radius 5 meters if tangential acceleration at any point is 10 meters per second square and the net acceleration makes an angle 30 degree with the centripetal acceleration then the instantaneous speed is so this is similar to one of the questions that we solved earlier right tangential acceleration is given it's 10 meters per second square and the angle between net acceleration and centripetal acceleration is given so we can draw this diagram okay so this is total acceleration this is tangential and this is centripetal so the angle between total acceleration and centripetal acceleration it is given it's 30 degrees okay we want instantaneous speed and what else is given tangential acceleration is also given okay tangential is 10 meters per second square so what should we do tell me yes This is simple, right? Do you know the angle between? Okay, can you find the relation between AT and AC? What is that? Exactly. Tan theta equals to AT by AC. Okay. So if you want AC, it will be AT divided by tan of theta. So theta is 30 degrees and AT is how much? It's 10 meters per second square. Put the values. How much is tan of 30 degrees? It is 1 upon root 3, right? Okay, put that, take that root 3 in numerator. So it will be 10 root, 10 root 3 and this is V square upon R. So this is v square divided by r is 10 root 3 take the r on other side so you get v square equals to 10 times root 3 multiplied by r is 5 so it is 50 times root 3 is v square okay so 50 multiplied by 1.73 okay so nearly equal to we can say How much? Nearly equal to 85, I can say. Little bit more than that. So, how much will be V? Square root of 85. More than, more than 9. Right. So, it's option B. Okay, is it clear? Yes, no. You are not responding, Ganga. So we have to solve this together, right? Because in exam, ultimately, you have to solve. Okay. All right. So after that, 
let's talk about another method of finding centripetal acceleration now you would say why another method because there can be questions based upon this thing also okay based upon this method itself so let's understand this you have this particle which is performing circular motion okay and we'll find out its centripetal acceleration using the calculus method calculus meaning or uh, using the derivatives and integrals so now suppose the particle starts from somewhere suppose it starts from here only from point a and it goes to b okay so we can write its angular velocity the magnitude of angular velocity is theta by t okay if i take t on other side i can define theta equals to omega t right then this is the position vector of this particle r bar is the position vector at time t we can resolve it along two components one is x component another one another one is y component so i can write r bar is equal to rx into i cap plus ry into j cap okay then we know rx is equal to r cos theta ry is equal to r sin theta and theta is equal to omega t therefore r bar is equal to r cos omega t multiplied by i cap plus r sin omega t multiplied by j cap so this will be the position vector of the particle performing circular motion at any time t if it starts if it starts from this position okay you can say on the positive side of x axis okay then this will be the formula for its position vector so this formula is clear okay we have to remember this formula also <clears throat> and then you can find out its velocity taking derivative of r bar with respect to time so here r will be constant take derivative of cos of omega t so using chain rule i can say derivative of cos of omega t is minus sin of omega t right multiplied by omega derivative of sin of omega t will be equal to cos of omega t times omega okay using the chain rule so then you can take that omega outside so you get v bar is equal to r omega multiplied by minus sin omega t into i cap plus cos omega t into j cap okay this will be your v bar and then you take another derivative so you take another derivative you will get acceleration okay you take another derivative what will you get you will get acceleration so that acceleration okay is equal to so if we take another derivative of this thing uh, so we perform the process it comes out to be minus of omega square see if we take one derivative you will have this omega omega comes out as a product of chain rule right so then if you take another derivative another omega will come out then you will get r omega square multiplied by this term okay and therefore now your centripetal acceleration will be equal to minus of omega square multiplied by r of r multiplied by cos of omega t into i cap plus r sin omega t into j cap and this is nothing but your position vector okay so we can say that centripetal acceleration is equal to minus of omega square multiplied by r bar okay so is this thing clear right so this is this is the calculus method of finding the centripetal acceleration and there is one more thing kinematic equations for circular motion so this is simple actually you have kinematic equations for linear motion v is equal to u plus at s equals to ut plus half at square v square is u square plus 2 as now what can we do in case of uniform angular acceleration these equations are valid for uniform linear acceleration in case of circular motion if angular acceleration is uniform okay if angular acceleration is uniform that means which acceleration is constant 
centripetal of or tangential angular angular acceleration is constant okay if angular acceleration is constant then which of the two accelerations will have constant magnitude is it the centripetal acceleration or is it the tangential acceleration okay let me frame this question in different way so angular acceleration is constant okay which of the two centripetal or tangential can be written as r multiplied by angular acceleration which is r multiplied by alpha is it centripetal or tangential tangential acceleration right okay so if alpha is constant which one will be constant in magnitude it will be tangential acceleration okay so if you want to use these equations these equations for speed okay or the distance covered in case of circular motion then which acceleration should be constant which acceleration should not depend on time it is the tangential acceleration if i say tangential acceleration at is equal to suppose uh, 3 plus 2t can i use these equations you cannot use yes or no not okay <laughs> these equations are for uniformly accelerated motion right if i want to use them in circular motion what should i have uniform acceleration okay which acceleration uniform tangential acceleration uniform meaning constant in magnitude then i can say that v is my speed not the velocity v is my speed so v is equal to u plus at s is the distance covered okay in one revolution in n revolutions etc which is ut plus half at square and v square is u square plus 2as i can only say this if at does not depend on time if it is constant okay so please remember this thing okay and then we can use these equations as they are in circular motion and we can also transform these equations okay and get angular kinematic equations so how can we get them so uh, uh, sorry to get angular kinematic equations you just have to replace velocity with angular velocity acceleration with angular acceleration etc etc and distance covered okay or displacement you can say will be equal to what the angle covered okay so if i change this this is suppose initial velocity now i can change u to initial angular velocity i can say omega at time 0 omega 0 v i will change to omega at time t okay a will be changed to angular acceleration alpha and t is kept as it is okay and s is changed to theta theta is the total angular displacement then i can rewrite these equations okay in this form so one is omega t is equal to omega 0 plus alpha t second one theta equals to omega not t plus half of alpha times t square and third one will be omega t square equals to omega not square plus 2 alpha theta is it clear yes no okay and if we want to derive them what we can do is we can just say v is equal to r times omega okay u is equal to r times omega not a is equal to a is equal to what at 
tangential acceleration which is r times alpha then r r r will get cancelled out and we'll get these equations all of them okay so this is these are the equations the kinematic equations in circular motion so we can use this set of equations also we can use these set of equations i mean we can use linear equations also we can use angular equations also but in case of linear equations this a is which a which acceleration it is the tangential acceleration okay and we can only use them if tangential acceleration is constant okay is it clear is there any question okay so now let us see some questions based upon whatever we discussed so the position vector of a particle is r r bar okay this is r bar okay bold case is vector quantity so r bar is equal to a cos of omega t times i cap plus a sin omega t into j cap the velocity vector of particle is option a parallel to position vector option b perpendicular to position vector option c directed towards the origin option d directed away from the origin so can you guess okay if this is position vector which kind of motion is particle performing if this is position vector then which kind of motion is the particle performing is it performing circular motion yes no we just saw this no in case of circular motion position vector is given by this formula okay so it is r cos omega t into i cap plus r sin omega t into j cap right so this is clear that this particle is performing circular motion yes or no okay so now can you guess which one which of the options is correct okay what is direction of position vector it's along the radius right what is direction of the velocity vector at this point it's directed along the velocity is directed along the tangent right so what is angle between them it is 90 degrees okay so which of the options is correct it's perpendicular to position vector option b okay this is very simple next question a particle moves so that its position vector is given by r bar is equal to omega t sorry cos of omega t multiplied by x cap plus sin of omega t multiplied by y cap where omega is constant which of the following is true so now this is clear that this particle is performing circular motion because in case of circular motion only you have position vector uh, defined as sum r multiplied by cos of omega t into x cap or i cap you can say plus r sin omega t into j cap okay then how much will be value of r here how much is radius of this particle can you guess this kind of equation is given how much would be the radius of the particle
okay compare this with r bar equals to r cos omega t into i cap or i can say x cap plus okay r sin omega t into j cap compare this with this how much is r one meter right there is no r here yes or no okay r is equal to 1 meter okay or one unit in whatever units this is okay which one of the following is true option a velocity and acceleration both are parallel to r option b velocity is perpendicular to r and acceleration is directed to towards the origin option c is velocity is perpendicular to r and acceleration is directed away from origin option d is velocity and acceleration both are perpendicular to r now tell me which one is correct this is from some neat exam right it's option right it's option b velocity is perpendicular to r okay and acceleration is directed towards the origin which is centripetal acceleration okay so option b will there be tangential acceleration in this one yes or no when we derived this formula when when we derived this formula we considered that this object is moving with some angular velocity which is constant right angular velocity is constant that means there is no angular acceleration okay if there is no accel angular acceleration then we know tangential acceleration is given by r multiplied by alpha if omega is constant alpha is zero that means tangential acceleration would be zero okay so this is the position vector of a particle performing circular motion but which kind of circular motion uniform circular motion okay uniform circular motion so tangential acceleration would be equal to zero in uniform circular motion is it clear yes no okay so there can be questions based upon very minute things like this okay and since the time of nta has started conducting it questions are like this only okay very simple questions or conceptual questions only most of the times all right so the the radius of circle the period of revolution initial position and sense of revolution are indicated in the below figure okay y projection of radius vector of rotating particle p is this is the question what is y component okay so particle is at point p okay at point p sure at t equals to 0 okay this is the y component so at t equals to 0 y component would be maximum and as it moves so let's suppose at some time t it goes here right so this angle is theta okay this angle is theta equals to omega t you can say theta equals to omega t okay and you have t equals to 4 seconds so omega is 2 pi upon t right omega is is it going out no 2 pi upon t okay so t is 4 that means it will be 2 pi divided by 4 or pi by 2 okay so it is pi by 2 multiplied by t 
okay now you want y projection okay you want y projection is it given by sin theta or cos theta particle is revolving like this this is r y projection y will be equal to r sin theta or r cos theta I have marked theta. Yes, Ganga, is it sin theta or cos theta? Particle started from here. Okay, so theta is covered like this. Okay, so now this is your R. In order to find out this Y component, you have to go through the angle. So through the angle is cos component always, away from angle is sin component. Okay. Through the angle cos component away from angle sine component. So this is cos component. Okay, y will be equal to r cos of theta. Yes, no. Or consider this triangle. In this triangle, cos of theta is adjacent side divided by hypotenuse, which is r. Okay, y upon r is cos of theta. Okay. Cos theta is y upon r. So, y will be equal to what? r times cos of theta. Okay. So, now tell me which of these options is correct and yes, radius. How much is radius? 3 meters. Radius is 3 meters. Okay. So, which one is correct? Which one? Option C. Right. Yeah, option C. Okay, is it clear? 